More than 80 years ago, our first inductee set a standard on the wrestling mat that would be hard to match. So many have chased that greatness since, and I suspect that pursuit will continue for years to come. But it wasn't just a stellar wrestling career that made this individual a special member of the Gettysburg Athletic Department. However, just one loss over the entirety of a career definitely didn't hurt. Let's hear more about Henry Schwartz and what earns him this spot in the Hall of Athletic Honor. Henry Hank Schwartz came to Gettysburg College in 1938 and set an early standard for the Gettysburg wrestling program that was still in its infancy of collegiate competition. A standout in the 136 pound weight class, Schwartz was a letter winner all four seasons and won the Middle Atlantic Conference Division Championship twice in back-to-back -back years, 1941 and 1942. During his senior year, he served as team captain and was named the MAC Most Outstanding Wrestler across all weight classes. Schwartz lost just once during the entirety of his Gettysburg career and led the team to a 16-8-1 dual meet record. The 1941 and 1942 wrestling teams finished as runners-up in the MAC championships. In 2013, he was named to the MAC All-Century team. Outside of the wrestling room, Schwartz supported Gettysburg Athletics as a whole, serving as the baseball team manager all four years. He also acted as head cheerleader for the football team during his senior year. Schwartz was a true Gettysburgian, starting a legacy at the college that includes his wife, son, daughter, grandson, and great niece. Schwartz graduated from Gettysburg in 1942 with a degree in economics. He served as Chief Financial Officer of Penn Insurance for over 25 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robert Schwartz, class of 1992, to the podium to accept this posthumous honor on his grandfather's behalf. They uh, don't build these for me. Uh, before I get started, I just want to thank Wheaties and Marsha again. That is an incredible legacy for this college, and I want to I want to point that out. <clears throat> this is a tough town in which to give a short speech. <laughs> I'll be here all night, folks. Um, Five minutes. Anyway, uh, good evening and a huge, you're going to hear some of this again, so settle in. Uh, good evening and a huge thank you to President Uliano, the Orange and Blue Club, the members of the selection committee, the other remarkable honorees, uh, and my fellow alumni. My name is Robert Schwartz, and tonight I'm the storyteller for my grandfather, ugh, the late Henry Schwartz, class of 1942. For those few of you who met Hank in person, I face a daunting task, because he was the single best storyteller I have ever met. So this, this is gonna pale by comparison. In the fall of 1938, against the backdrop of the worst economic crisis in this country's history, and while fascism infected his grandparents' homeland, Henry Otto Schwartz, his actual name, son of a steel worker and a home homemaker, left Natrona Heights, Pennsylvania, population 6,800, to be the first of his family to attend college. It was a moment that was not lost on him. He once told me, going to Gettysburg at that moment felt very lonely. But as so many of the honorees tonight I suspect will tell us, sports offers us community and connection, purpose and focus, a new family and a new mission. Even if the journey to those things is uneven, and so it was for Hank as he arrived to meet the legendary coach, Hen Bream, who would go on to become a lifelong friend. Coach Bream welcomed Hank to the first day of football practice with something most Schwartzes have heard before. You are too small to play football. <laughs> to his credit, Coach Bream had heard of Hank's athleticism and sent him immediately to see the head wrestling coach, Pete Beeson. And what happened from there is magic. 
I don't need to report what was already in the video, but I'll skim. With Hank in the wrestling fold, the Gettysburg Matt men would take off, and he would win the Mac University Division 136 pound title in 41 and 42. And he'd be named the most outstanding Mac wrestler in any weight class in 1942. At the time, and it's hard to appreciate, that was a thing. That was a real thing. But perhaps most importantly, and most proudly for him, as he would tell you, Hank would only lose once in his entire career, and only then, while suffering from a staph infection on his arms so advanced that he wrestled with them wrapped in gauze and tape, which is both amazing and gross. <laughs> During his four years here, as you saw, and the, the Nick and the gang with the archives are incredible. That cheerleading photo, oh, I wish he were here. Uh, Hank would participate in many other parts of campus life. Baseball manager, head football cheerleader, Dean's List, Dean's List member, which I also didn't know. I don't think his son knew either. Um, Phi Sigma Kappa brother. But Hank's Gettysburg story, like so many people in this room, was a love story. And just outside of Old Dorm, he would meet the great love of his life, Helen. And from that point forward, for almost 50 years, they would be a single entity, Hank and Helen. Or if you asked Helen, Helen and Hank. They would graduate in the spring of 1942 to a world fully at war, and Hank would be assigned to serve his country as a C-46 commando pilot trainer at Homestead Army Airfield in Florida. After the war, Hank and Helen would go on to raise three children, my fellow Fiji brother Tom, class of 67, whose wife Evelyn is here tonight, Susan, my aunt, class of 1973, and Bob, who somehow went to Maryland but is also with us here tonight. Uh, I also would like to point out my sister Jessica and my wife Lisa. And uh, my son Henry. If we had named you like Fred, this would be easier. <laughs> he would take his economics degree and have a successful career in finance. That is not what I do. It's cliche to the point of absurdity, and I suspect my old English professors would not be pleased that I would use it. But to know Hank, was to love him. He was larger than life, and almost inevitably the life of any party I have ever been at with him. And I have never met anyone who knew more jokes than my grandfather, and he would revel in having an audience to share them. He knew how to work hard and have fun in his relationships. His social structure was broad and wide and connected, and he believed in the power of stories. He believed in the magic of a warm and open heart, and the life-saving possibilities of a beef eater martini. <laughs> he was what so many of us here seated tonight are, Gettysburgian to our core. And when it came time for me to make my own college decision, he wisely counseled me that as far as he was concerned, I could go anywhere I wanted, with a single exception. You cannot go to FNM. <laughs> when in doubt with a speech, pander. And for once with Hank, that wasn't a joke. Hank would have loved tonight all these tables of people to meet and to hold court, and I assure you they would have kicked him out of here at like 11 all the details of your lives that he would have loved. Details of consequential Gettysburg lives. Ah, he would have loved it. I love you, pup. Thanks for gracing us with your humor and your talent, your optimism, your love. It took us a bit, but we got you right back where you belong, back home. Thanks so much.